Right, anybody who thought they were going to be able to escape this session, tough. <laughs> I want to talk to you about Quinjack. You've already heard about um, a bit of an outline of it from Colin, but um, I've got one or two questions I wanted to ask you, one of which is a complete waste of time now because I was going to ask you you'd heard of it. Clearly you've all heard of it now because Colin told you all about it, but I will ask you one other question. With the exception of those who are in it, who knows what Quinjack does? It all goes very quiet. Okay, in one way that's a good thing, and in another way it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing because we have yet to communicate to everybody what it does, and it's a good thing because it gives me something to talk about for the next few minutes. These are the aims and objectives of Quinjack. I don't expect you to go through all of those and read them. They're on HSE's website. And essentially, what Quinjack seeks to do is to promote health and safety in the quarrying industry and the associated industries. It wants to identify health and safety challenges and concerns affecting the industry. And it wants to develop solutions, share information, and learn from incidents and also from HSC inspections and investigations. Who are we? Membership is drawn from trade associations. That's three, the three main um, quarrying trade associations, which are the Mineral Products Association, British Aggregates Association and Colpro. From professional bodies, such as the Institute of Quarrying and the Geological Society. From trade unions, the GMB and Unite. And from educational establishments as well, from the University of Derby and the Camborne School of Mines. Currently, Quinjack formally meets once a year, but it does consult electronically within itself all of the time. Now, this is an important bit. Outputs from Quinjack carry the Quinjack title, not HSE. However, your quality assurance on those outputs is that they must be agreed by the whole committee. The whole committee includes HSE. What you're getting is, in, is industry expert developed HSE endorsed guidance and it's the nearest thing to HSE guidance available to the industry other than the official ACOP to the quarries regulations. Now the host website to those outputs is www.quinjack.com or .co.uk and www.safequarry.com. All of the outputs are freely downloadable and they can be put onto member organisation websites. Now, Quinjack also has subcommittees and working groups established to support the main committee on particular subjects. Another thing, Quinjack is now branded, and it has a strap line, which I think captures exactly what it's all about. It's essential health and safety guidance for quarries. That's what Quinjack's all about. Now, I'm not going to go too much on into this. There's also a smartphone app, by the way, but you're going to be hearing an awful lot more about that shortly when my um, double-act partner, Mr Phillips, joins me up on here in a few minutes' time. What's Quinjack achieved? Well, actually, quite a lot. Accidents in quarries are now 85% less than they were in the year 2000 which was the year that marked the start of the Hard Targets Initiative. Quinjack has published over 50 pieces of industry-led guidance and has several important pieces of guidance also under development. Quinjack also consulted very extensively on the Quarries Regulations 1999 and the accompanying ACOP, um, and also to the amendments to the ACOP, which were fairly limited in scope recently following the, uh, the Lofted Review, of health and safety legislation. Carrying on from that, you've seen a bit of this in Colin's um, presentation. So the really good news there runs from 2000 to 2010. That clearly shows how all the good work done in the industry translated 
into accident reductions. And by keeping on doing those things, they're staying at this reduced level, which is 85% lower than it was at the start. Just have another look at uh, what Quinjack has achieved. The over 50 pieces of industry-led guidance. Again, I'm not going to go through all of these. This is just a simple um, a, um, example of some of the guidance that's been produced by each of the working groups. But to give you a flavour, we know, for example, that the contractor's roadmap to safety is being used by our contractors. And we know this because two of the major companies in the industry have undertaken the Health and Safety Laboratories Health and Safety Climate Tool. And the answers to that and the responses that come back from that tell us this. So we know, we have, uh, we have um, um, actual proof that this is, this is being used. I've also recently been informed that um, when, the, when Quinjet published its um, operator and contractor code of conduct, that document was seized upon by the Health and Safety Authority in Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, who have now accredited it to HS2 Quinjack and published it as an HSE document, as an HSA document, sorry. Also, I should tell you that Quinjack is in the final stages of consultation on amending and updating the electrical guidance that, used, that was and still is available, I should say, on HSE's website. The intention there is that Quinjack will adopt that guidance, update it to the 17th edition, and make it relevant to now. And the HSE guidance will be removed from our website. So Quinjack will then own that guidance. We also know, for example, that the geotechnical guidance that's available has been seen by at least 300 people from the quarrying industry. And we know that's true because that's how many people attended the Quinjack geotechnical seminars held two years ago. You'll also know, those of you that get inspected by inspectors, that uh, our inspectors will refer to Quinjack guidance during inspections. And MPQC, the training body, refers to and uses Quinjack guidance in a, an awful lot of its courses. Now, there are still issues with getting information out to those who need it. And that's despite having things like app, the website, the app, Agnet, and HSE's own Quarry E bulletins, which I know many of you were signed up for because three years ago there were 500 people signed up to HSE e bulletins. There are now over 16,000. Let's go back to that graph. You saw this a little while ago. Colin put it up. This is the full version of the graph I showed you two slides ago. And the reason I'm putting this up is to show the plateau. I also want to reiterate that our accident incident rate is around two times the national average for all industries, but fatal accident incident rates are 11 times the average for all industries. We should be in no doubt whatsoever that quarrying remains a very dangerous incident in industry and that any accident within us in our industry is likely to have or a high likely high likelihood of being a serious accident. Now looking at that last six years, the plateau one thing we have to remember during that time is that this industry contracted something like 40% in that period. Therefore, we know that the actual accident incident rate must be going up because the numbers have stayed level. So we've got to start doing something different. The old adage, if we keep doing what we've been doing, we'll keep getting what we've been getting. Now, that isn't all bad because we've got that huge reduction that shows there. But this industry gave a commitment to becoming zero harm, and I believe that's what it wants to be, and I also believe it has the expertise and the will to do it. However, and this is a recent quote from somebody who's a respected contractor working in our industry for actually a major quarrying company, and he said, 
and this is sort of a, uh, a paraphrased quote, hmm, they go on about target zero, but chuck it out the window if it gets in the way of commercial decisions or they pass the buck to someone else. Now, that somewhat mirrors what Colin said about um, issues of leadership actually being at middle management, site management, and supervisor level. But the simple thing is, we need to recognise and tease out the attitudes because they're the people that we need to change because they are contributing to that plateau. Bit of Monty Python-esque here. What does Queen Jack do for you? What did the Romans ever do for us? Okay, develops HSC agreed industry-led guidance. It also, as Colin said, offers a developmental opportunity for all staff, not just managers, but for the workforce as well. And I want to touch on that as well in a minute. It offers a forum to discuss emerging issues, and it allows you to consult with HSC on operational policy. Now here's an important one. Who owns Quinjack? Well, the members do. It's not owned by HSE. HSE provides the secretariat and chairs it. But it does what its members want it to do. But its members have got to tell it what it wants, them to, what it, wants it to do. What's the purpose of Quinjack? Well, the ultimate purpose has to be to help the quarrying industry to become what it says it wants to be in terms of health and safety, namely a zero-harm environment. Harm, I said, not accident. That's harm, accidents and ill health. But it needs the commitment and resources that industry can provide in order to achieve that. That it is achievable is beyond doubt. What we have to do is make it sustainable. I have some remaining questions. How does Quinjack get guidance to those who need to see it? How can you access Quinjack guidance? I'm now going to hand over to Mike Phillips, who hopefully is going to be able to answer some of those questions for you. Thank you. Morning, all. Yeah, I do work for the Institute of Quarrying, but please bear with me because I am wearing my Quinjack hat today. All right. I joined Quinjack seven years ago, and it's not only Quinjack, but I sit on numerous other committees. But one of the things what I am truly passionate about is is the work that Quinjack does, and um, and I rightly so, as Colin said, um, you've got to get the information out there. Day day one of the conference yesterday was all about how we communicate, engage with people, new ways of, of communicating and pushing the way forward. And, um, and this is where the, the Quinjack communication subgroup set, was set up. And this was two years ago. And, um, and actually it was Roy, the bugger, who um, volunteered me to, to, to chair this committee. And so I just thought I would let you know what we've been up to, what we've been doing. So we... We went out to the industry and we said, actually, how many people use Quinjack and how many people know where, where it lives and what it does and where to get the information from? And the, the, re the response back was absolutely astonishing. It was rooms like this where you'd get three and four people putting the hand up and it was embarrassing, actually, considering the work that Quinjack does. So we said... One of the first things what we've got to do is we've got to give Quinjack access to absolutely everybody, right? And as Roy was saying, supervisors, guys who sweep up on belt ends, working quarries, loading shovel operators, the lot, absolutely everybody. So we, we said, hang on a second, we've got to we've got to do a bit better than this because I was sat in the main Quinjack meeting and I googled Quinjack, right? And on Google, it came up as page 41. I said, well, we've got a hell of a challenge there. And um, so that's not good enough. So we used a bit of wizardry and so on. And we gave it a strap line, essential health and safety guidance in quarries. Right? And we started using analytics and so on. 
actually, I'm really proud to say now we're at no, on line four or line two actually this morning um, of page one of Google. We created Quinjack.com and Co.uk. That was that was a hell of a thing, right? Everything used to land on Safe Quarry, but we said no, no, no. Give give Quinjack its own identity. And being a Yorkshireman, believe it or not, I did put my hand in my own pocket and, and bought that for the industry. And I said, well, that's fine. It's absolutely marvellous. But we also said, we've got to start using social media. Right? This is how people communicate. We're talking about the Twitter walls and LinkedIn. I've personally been posting things on LinkedIn this morning. Right? But people are starting to use it, and we've got to, we've got to engage with people in a different way. We also said that... Target Zero has been around for quite a while. I can remember the old Target Zero, and it's been there for 10 years, and you think, well, actually, we need to, to kick this off and give it a, a fresh, a fresh um, lease of life. And we created this. We actually called it the drive to Target Zero. In fact, it was Colin Jenkins what came up with that in the main Quinjack meeting. And we launched this at Hillhead in front of 8,500 people. Phenomenal. And as I say, we, we, the Google rankings have, have just gone through the roof. So when, it, when we're talking about social media, we've got a guy who's, who's um, graffitiing on a board over there. And one of the big things what, came, what I took from yesterday was, from the industry experts, we should be using social media much better. So we said, right, we'll do that. And it is a new era of communicating. And um, if I can just take a, a, a poll on this. All right, how many people in the room use some form of social media? That speaks volumes. And I think that is one thing what we've got to push forward. And we are getting better at it. <coughs> so we, social media, bearing in mind, right, we haven't publicised this at all. Right, this hasn't gone up. We, we, we just set the groups up. Well, I didn't. Um, it was Dave Tebbett who works for IQ. And he gets all, all the credit for this. LinkedIn group, 93 members. Right. Twitter, 56 followers. Facebook, 15 likes. That's without publicising a thing. It's people, what's just out there, you and I, who's looking for Quinjack. So we said, actually, there's all this guidance, 50-odd pieces, hugely important stuff. It's out there. So we said, well, why don't we create an app? And firstly, when I, when I stood up in front of the main Quinjack and I scared people to death on this one, and there was a fair bit of um, reluctance to do it, but we said, no, 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 we'll do it, we'll do it. So the focus of the app, we said, we're going to make it free, absolutely free of charge, not one of these 69 pence things where you download and they start asking you for, for, for more money. We said, no, 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 this has got to be free. It's got to be dead easy to use, very intuitive. It's got to be accessible on Apple and Android systems. But it's also got to work on tablets as well as mobile devices. I've got mine here. Come and follow me in a, in a bit and I'll show you. But it's got to work on everything as much as we possibly can. It doesn't work on Blackberries because Blackberry don't seem to be too keen on apps. But it does work. We also said that Actually, when you stood in a hole in the ground in a quarry, not all the time do you have a, a reception and you're not, you haven't got connected to internet, but we still wanted it to work. And um, through our app designers, they've put a huge amount of work into this. So actually, you can turn it up without any connectivity, it will work and you will get the guidance. So when you, when you open it up, that's the splash page. Um, the Prime logo's been added because it was, it was a major part of the Prime project, but it was actually sponsored by IQ. One-time registration. Um, you only register once, because we don't, we don't want to make it too difficult for everybody. right? But it, the most important thing about registering, we know then who's using the app, and who we can be targeting, who we can be pushing it to, and we can use it smarter. Right? And the other thing is, the user, 
we can we can contact you and we can push messages to you. It's an interface. It's a tool to get the information to you. So once you've logged on, that's your home screen, right? Very fresh, very easy. <coughs> Looks exactly the same as the website. Quinjack guidance at the top. What is Quinjack? Target zero. Very, very easy information. So you click onto the guidance. Looks exactly the same again. As always, we always use the three-click rule because people don't want to do anything more than click three times, otherwise they lose interest. And it's still there. So you can see contractors drilling and blasting, geotechnical face and stockpiles, and so on. And once you get into the contractors, that's the guidance. It's all there. And believe me, it does work offline. Example of a guidance page. Right. Very, very easy to use. So the app's continued. It's live. It's working. It's there. We know people are downloading it because we're tracking the usage. Right. Please go out there and use it. Like I say, it's free. And it's there. So the future of Quinjack. As Roy said, right, Quinjack is owned by you guys. Right? But I think what we what we've noticed within Quinjack, I think we need to have a push from moving from just purely providing guidance notes, right? The high level stuff. I think what we need to do is move Quinjack onto face to face communications web communications and so on. But I think what we need to do is get it out there into people, technical evenings, seminars, publications, hard and soft with this, right? So that engages with everybody and at every level. So we at IQ, we've got a dedicated team. We've got a Sarah and we've got a Dave who, who know a lot more than commun about, about communications than I do, right? So we've said that we'll help in this process. Right, it can't be just led, um, facilitated purely by the HEC. They've got to have some help, so we said we'd do it. And I think what we need to do is push out this absolutely superb work that Quinjack does into the future, but I think in a new way. That's me, very quick, but any questions? No, marvellous. <laughs> Quinjack has nine subgroups. Um, if we can just flick back. Um, is that it? Yep. So we've got things like contractors and so on. Each of them subgroups has a chairman, and they would be more than happy to have people in involved in them subgroups. So if you, if you want any information, who to contact, where to go, and so on, give me a shout, and I'll, I'll help all, all the way. There we go. Right, thank you very much. <laughs>